Well, John chapter nine, we've seen over the last few weeks, just this increasing uh, anger and frustration and hatred of the religious leaders towards Jesus. And it keeps building. The momentum is building. Jesus keeps on saying things and doing things which which really um, aggravate them. And it's it's all heading somewhere. John has shown us just this developing um, story of, of the enemies of God uh, coming around him and eventually seeking his death. In John chapter 9, you see probably one of the most comical um, stories in John's gospel. John is a master of irony, and you see just these one-liners that he puts in. And it just shows just the the, the real uh, foolishness of the religious leaders, but also the power of God. And you see that in John chapter 9. We're going to take two weeks just to unpack this story a little bit. Just looking at some background this week and then next week, really looking about what God has shown us in this chapter and the story is this jesus is walking on the sabbath with his disciples and his disciples come across a man who's been born blind and they say to jesus why is he blind is it because his parents sinned or because he sinned and jesus says no you've got this wrong the reason he is blind is so that i could be glorified I'm going to do something. And the whole reason that he has been blind is that so the power of God would be shown to you in this moment. Incredible. And he comes to the man and and Jesus bends down. He spits on the ground and makes some mud with his hands. And then he goes to the man and he anoints the man's eyes with this mud, spreading the mud on his eyes. And he says to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. The man goes, washes the mud off his eyes and he came back seeing i'll just stop there for this week and we'll see how the story develops next week but but a few things i just wanted to just to pull out for us this week i've read this story a number of times and each time i just find it strange and 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 quite shocking what jesus does here but i've never really understood why he does what he does why does he spit on the floor make mud and put it on the man's eyes and if you look at some of the history surrounding what Jesus does here, it's, it's actually really helpful in showing us what's going on. In Jesus' time in the first century, that was a, a common practice for, for, um, for Romans, people who weren't Jewish, people outside of, of the people of God. They believed that saliva had healing properties. So they would often use saliva as a bit of a, a balm on, on open wounds. The Jews thought that was disgraceful. They thought that was a pagan act, a pagan ritual, so that they would never do that. And actually, in the Old Testament, you see that God's people are commanded not to do that. You see um, an interchange with Aaron and Moses and, and Miriam, where, where Aaron and Miriam come to um, God and they complain about Moses. Moses seems to be a favourite of God. And they say, you know, we're prophets. We can, we can tell the people what to do. And God really puts them right and says, no, Moses is my man. He's the one I'm working through. I speak to him face to face. I don't do that with you. And as a punishment for their arrogance and their pride, God plagues Miriam with leprosy. Um, and uh, and she's treated as, as one who has to go outside the camp. And, and God likens it to someone who's been spat upon. He's saying in the Old Testament, if you were spat upon, you'd have to go outside the camp for seven days and be cleansed. And it's the same with, with Miriam. She has to go outside for seven days. And then you see uh, later on in the Old Testament, um, this law concerning uh, what a widow would do, how a widower would be cared. And there's a hypothetical example of, of um, a woman losing her husband, her husband dying. And the Jewish law would say that um, that man's brother would have to take her and look after her and really protect their family. And there's, uh, there's this hypothetical example of the brother-in-law refusing to do so. And so the law says, Moses says, in that situation, you go to that man who's refusing to care for you. You take off your sandal, you throw it at him and you spit at him. Now, that was an act of offense. That was to show the man that he was wholly unrighteous in what he was doing. It was to show him how he had stepped out of line with God's law and he was refusing to care. And so you can see uh, just in, our, in the historical narrative in the Bible, spitting was a real offense. So what is Jesus doing here? spitting on the floor, making up mud, rubbing it in the man's eyes. And all this is taking place on the Sabbath. 
the religious leaders are still all around there watching everything Jesus is doing and anointing someone on the Sabbath that was against their, their Jewish laws. Mixing things on the Sabbath was against their laws. And here is Jesus anointing someone, mixing mud and spit, seemingly breaking the law of the Sabbath. What's going on? Here's what I think we're being shown here. Two things. Firstly, that Jesus fulfills the law. The law does not hang over him as something that, that he can't kind of keep in line with. And, and a bit like that rebellious brother-in-law, he, he has to be uh, um, put outside and, and cursed because he's breaking the law himself. No, no, no. He fulfills the law. He keeps the law for us on our behalf because we can't. He gives the law. Jesus kind of stands in this just just fascinating position as, as the God-man who has to keep the law, but he is also the one who has given the law to God's people. He stands in a place of authority over the law. There's also something else profound here, I think, in this picture. It is something from Jesus. It is a bodily fluid from Jesus that brings healing to this man. Something is taken from Jesus and put over this man and it brings him healing, gives him sight and restores him. And we assume he's saved as well. We'll see that next week. This is pointing towards the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ as Jesus dies, he bleeds. He sheds his blood and it is by his wounds, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that he is able to purchase a people unto God. It is by his wounds that we are healed. It is through his shed blood that we are cleansed from our sin and brought into the family of God. I think this is a mini picture, a shadow of the cross of what Jesus is going to come and do for his people. Through his, his body being broken and, and fluids being poured from his body, he's able to bring healing to sinners, restoration to the blind. He's able to bring people to himself fascinating story we're going to see even more development in it next week but i think the thing for us to take away this week is this is to see the supremacy of christ to see that he is the only one who can fulfill the law who can stand in authority over the law and also say that see that he is the god who desires to save he and he alone is able to heal us of our great disease sin and bring sight to blind eyes bring restoration to those who are crippled with, with the disease that we have. And he is the only one who's able to bring us into being the people of God.